been a barbershop owner since 2015 and I've seen hundreds and hundreds of applications for barbers that wanted to work with us and 99% of them unfortunately never even made it to the interview process. So if you're a barber looking for a job, I want to show you some of the things that you can do to increase the likelihood that you'll get the job at whatever barbershop you're trying to work at. So the first thing you need to consider is the mindset of the owner of the shop that you are applying at. I can't really speak for other barbershop owners, but for me, I've had so many bad experiences with hiring the wrong people. Some of the first thoughts that are going through my mind, honestly, are, is this person crazy? <laughs> can I trust this person? How long are they going to stick around? Right? Because as a barbershop owner, you don't want to pour energy and time into training somebody and bringing them into your, your family of barbers just for them to leave. Right? So that's the first thing you need to consider is the barbershop owner is looking for somebody most likely that's going to be sticking around long term, that's going to contribute to the overall business. And that's not crazy, right? That pe people that are willing to take constructive criticism, people that want to grow, at least that's what we look for. And I think that's what a lot of barbershop owners look for. We don't want people that are going to just hang around for a month and then take, try to take as many clients as they can and then go to a shop down the street. You know, we don't want people that are going to come in and cause drama. So those are definitely red flags when we, when I kind of see those things, when barbers apply and I can see like just, just from not, not even talking to them, I can, I can see that they're full of drama. They don't, they, they tend to hop around barbershops a lot. So it's like, in my mind, they're not going to stick around. They're, they have a pattern of kind of hopping around and working at this shop for a month. And then they go to this shop. And you also have to consider that who's taking the bigger risk. Because let's say you're at a barbershop now and you're looking to leave, that might seem like it's a big risk for you. However, if you think about it, even if you have a terrible experience working somewhere, like worst case scenario is that you just leave and you go to a different barbershop. What the owner has to consider is this person could, that I bring in could permanently damage my reputation. And you come into the barbershop and you are messing clients up, you know, and they're leaving bad reviews on Google, Yelp, Facebook, whatever. Those reviews are more or less permanent. And a lot of the bad reviews that we've gotten are for barbers that don't even work for us anymore, that have, haven't worked for us for years. So I keep that in mind when I'm looking at applications. I'm like, I'm taking a huge risk by bringing you on as a barber. So you have to think about the fact that this owner that you're trying to work for is taking a bigger risk than you are when you are applying to work for them. Because worst case scenario, it doesn't work out for you, then you move on to another shop, right? But they have to deal with the aftermath for months, potentially years, if you go in there and you do damage to that barbershop's reputation. So you can reverse those things that I just said by thinking about, well, if the owner is worried about whether I'm crazy or full of drama or not, then I'm going to make sure that I show that I'm not. If they're worried about me leaving for after a few months and that's, you don't plan to, if you're happy there, then let them know maybe in the application or whatever, I'm looking for a spot that's long-term for me. I want to look for a place that I can grow and you know, if, and we're worried about, of course, the damage to our reputation as a barbershop. So then letting them know that you're experienced, that even if you're not experienced, but letting the, at least letting them know where you're at and being honest about that. Like honesty is honest. We're going to find out either way. <laughs> like we can either find out before the interview or after you start. But me personally, I'd rather find out up front because at least I know as an owner what I'm getting into when I bring you on. So even if it's not experience, at least let us know that, right? So that way we can, you know, if we still decide to bring you on, at least we're not surprised by the fact that you're gonna need some training to get to where you, we need you to be. First thing to consider, really, really important one, maybe the most important one about, out of all these. So the second thing to consider when you're applying for a job at a barbershop is the type of barbershop that you're applying to. So why is this important? Well, 
it really depends on your situation. So <clears throat> if you're fresh out of school, for example, fresh out of barber school or cosmetology school, or maybe you're transitioning from a cosmetology background to a barber background, then you need to take this into consideration because not every barbershop is going to be as willing to talk to you. So for example, at our shop currently, we are looking for people that have experience because we're not quite set up to take somebody that's fresh out of school and put them through six to 12 months of training because that's what we found it takes to get somebody from out of school to now they're performing at like a pretty good level. I think that's the best like long-term situation. But if somebody applied to us and they were fresh out of barber school or they were looking for a cause, if they were cosmetology, worked at a salon their whole career, but they want to transition to barbering. I mean, that's the same thing to us almost as coming fresh out of barber school because that not a lot of that experience at the salon is going to translate to the barbershop. Some stuff does, but when it comes to the technical skills of cutting, shaving, that that's basically taking some, arguably it may be worse and, or harder to train somebody who's coming from a salon background and transition them to a barber because now they have all these bad habits that they have to unlearn. If you need training as a barber, then you wanna go somewhere that has a training program that is set up to train you because that's what you need. Right? You can, you may take a little bit of a hit up front, maybe like they, the pay is less because they have to account for the fact that the training, you know, they're pouring this time and energy into you. So, and there's a cost that comes with that and you're still gonna get paid to learn, but the focus in the beginning is gonna be getting you, just getting you to where they need you to be. So typically, that's why I, I like, I really like the idea of like people that are going, that are graduating from barber school, going to a, like a chain salon or a franchise because those places typically have either good training programs or very high volume. So there could be other barbershops like on the other end of the spectrum. Like I think we may be here eventually where they don't even want people with experience because they're so good at taking people that know nothing and getting them to being amazing barbers. And I think that's where we're going to end up in the long run because right now we're not set up to, you know, fix every single haircut. You need a, you need a solid training program. You need, it depends on where the business is at. Like if you, if the business needs that revenue now and can't afford to wait six to 12 months for you to become profitable to the business, then you're probably not going to have a good shot at getting a job there. But if it's like a more mature, more stable business and they can afford to invest six, 12 months into you of training um, and they can wait you know, to, for you to become like a contributing barber, like you're actually helping to make the shop money now, then they're gonna be more likely to hire you if you don't have experience. It doesn't necessarily matter whether it's commission, booth rent, whatever. Um, I don't know a lot of booth rent shops that have training, but if it's commission or hourly, there, I would say there's a higher likelihood that they're gonna have some sort of training because right? they directly benefit by you getting better. So consider that before you apply to a barbershop. And you know, if you're not sure, you can always ask, right? Do you guys hire people that are fresh out of school? Do you guys hire people that need training? And if they say yes, then, and, you, and that matches with what you, with your background, then go ahead and apply. If you have experience, I would say that the likelihood is higher. So if, you're, if there's a barbershop that you really wanna work at, you don't feel like, but they don't hire like people that are fresh out of school, Go somewhere else, get some experience first, and then go back after you've got some practice and try again. So, and here's a key point, something I learned the hard way, but we kind of touched on this with the salon experience comment, but not all experience is a good experience. So if you work in a salon for 30 years, now you want to try your hand at barbering, that's going to be a red flag for me because you don't have the right type of experience. You have experience doing chemical services, color, etc., but n probably not a whole lot of skin fades, right? It's a completely different environment too. Barbershops tend to be a little bit more quick, fast paced. And I found it very difficult to get people that are used to doing hour, two hour services and get them down to 30 minutes. So just don't, don't say like, I have 30 years of experience. Like 
the, what type of experience because if it's a salon then you you basically know better not much better than a barber school student to be honest so now i want to talk about a few things you can do kind of once so that once you apply for a job that you'll increase the likelihood that you even get an interview so these these the following are things that you can do once you got these down so think think about this as marketing too You'd be amazed at how many people apply to work for us and they don't even have a social media account, which it's not, it's not necessary, right? But what we're trying to do is increase the likelihood. So in social, with social media being free too, I don't see any reason why you can't at least throw up like 10 pictures on a profile and before you apply for the job, this is, that's the key. Before you apply, you wanna, do, you wanna make sure your social media is on point. So making sure you have pictures or videos of your work, and then if you have any personal social media, either clean it up, take everything that you think might be a red flag to the owner down, or make your stuff private because that can hurt you in, if the owner goes to see anything and it looks like you have a lot of drama going on in your personal life, it may, just be, they may just be like not worth it just move on right so because keep in mind the mindset of the owner they're probably going to be looking for is this person crazy are they dependable are they drama free so if that shows up on your social media then that's going to be a red flag for somebody like me right? have some photos and videos of your work because it's first of all it's free and it's going to increase the likelihood that you get the job are all barbershop owners gonna care about this? No. Have we hired people that don't have social media? Yes. But if you have a stack of applications, like we get sometimes, the people that have proof that they know what they're doing are gonna be way more likely to get the call first. By the way, all these are optional, like, but what, like I'm, I'm gonna keep reiterating this point, but what we're trying to do is increase the likelihood that you get the call, that you get the interview, that you get the job. These are just things that I've learned over time. It's like, you don't have to do these things. I've learned from experience that these are some of the things that are gonna, cause I look at like, why do I consider some people more? Like why do some people get an interview and some people get hired and other people don't even get considered? And it's because of some of these things here. So the, another thing is a resume. So, <laughs> I think if I could sum up all the things that we're going to talk about in this, in this part, it's going to be like, you want to do the things that most people aren't doing so that it sets you apart from the crowd. That's think of it as like marketing, but you're marketing yourself. So just the same way you would want to, if you're trying to attract clients, you'd want to kind of stand out. Like, what do you do different? Why are you better than the guy down the street? Or the, it's the same thing when you're marketing yourself for a job, you wanna to try to look at, well, what are they worried about? What kind of place am I going to? And then what are, what are all the things that I can do to differentiate myself? So this is gonna be some work, but a lot of it's like one time. Like you only have to, you don't have to be super active on social media, but as long as you have something, you're ahead of all the people that don't even have a profile. And the same thing with a resume. It doesn't have to be professional, but just something that sets you apart from just the, from the job application is really gonna help you in the long run. Because the fact that you took the time to put a resume together just says something different about you, that you took the extra step, which is gonna, I think, just gonna reflect really positively on you. And I think you should also think about just because you do all these things doesn't necessarily mean that you're guaranteed the job either it's ultimately gonna be up to the owner or the manager whether they decide to give you the call. But all of these things that I'm gonna list out will help increase the likelihood. Now, cover letter. <clears throat> Another thing you can do is a cover letter. So this is basically a short notes or a short, it, does, it could be just a few sentences, but saying like why, who you are, why you wanna apply for the job, what stood, stood out about it. Um, just something to show the barbershop owner that you actually want to work there it's easy to tell when people are just like hitting apply 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 because there's no effort put into the application at all they usually don't have a resume they usually don't have a cover letter so even if you are applying to multiple barbershops you can have a cover letter like a template and just kind of customize it for each one so that way 
the owner sees that you actually took some effort, you did some research before you applied to make sure it was a good fit for you. And that just is gonna reflect really well on you. And I, I kind of cover this with the cover letter because you can prove that you did research on the company in the cover letter. But I think this can also go back to here, like what type of barbershop do you wanna work at? So don't just look at the pay. Like don't go, if you don't like doing 15 minute haircuts, don't apply to work at a barbershop where the time standard is 15 minutes. Sounds like common sense, but I see a lot of people don't do this. We get to the interview process and I bring up, what's your average haircut time? And first of all, nobody gives me the, the truth on this answer, but they'll be like, oh, it's uh, 45 minutes, maybe an hour. And I'm like, well, our, our haircut's a 30 minutes. So don't even like waste your time or the owner's time by not doing research on the business, on the barbershop before you even apply there. The time standard is 30 minute haircuts and your average time is 45 minutes or an hour or longer. That's, that's already going to be a problem, right? You can get there, you can get your time down, but don't think like they're going to make an exception for you. Like we're not going to make an exception for you just because you don't like doing 45 minute haircuts. Like our time standard is 30. And if you can't do it, then it's like, okay, you know, that's fine. Well, there's other people that want to work here, you know, and there's probably other barbershops where it's okay to do 45 minute haircuts, but here it's 30 minutes. So if you, if, but if you don't do the research on the business, like go online and see what, go try to book an appointment and see what it looks like. See how their booking system works. See what the times, what are the services they offer, right? Because if part of the haircut includes a shave, and you don't know how to shave, and they're not training you on that, that's gonna be a problem. Right, so do some research before you apply and show it that you did research in your cover letter, but know that before you even apply, ideally. This right here is huge. I mean, this really, really goes a long way because it's, when people apply to us, it's on our end, it just looks like a name on, the, on a computer screen. It doesn't like humanize the fact that there's like another person on the other side of this that is trying to work for us and we don't know anything about you other than what we can see online but this really goes a long way introducing yourself to the to the owners to the barbershop to the the manager at the barbershop to the other barbers that work there just going in there and saying hi even getting a haircut there before just to kind of check the vibe of the shop out like really really good ideas All, we've definitely had people do this before and i would say that it definitely at least gets me to take a second look at their application. Even if they're not a good fit, if, if somebody takes the time to drive all the way to the shop, meet me, meet the managers, meet the other barbers, introduce themselves, even get a haircut there. I mean, it goes a long way. And it's definitely gonna make me take a second look at that application. Even if they've already rejected, if I've already said there wasn't a good fit, that's been rejected. And so I think this is huge and I would do it in person minimum do a phone call like hey I, I applied online i just wanted to follow up but i think that going the extra mile like all this other stuff is like really going to increase the likelihood that you even get the application so and this is what i did when i got for my first job i went in met the owner checked the vibe of the shop out and i think it went a long way and they know the place i got lucky because the place that i applied at normally didn't hire people that was fresh out of barber school but I think the fact that I went in there and introduced myself went a long way, right? Because it was almost like a, we did like a little quick pre-interview before like the formal interview, just and because then I showed her I wasn't crazy. I knew what type of shop I was working at and I definitely had did some research on them. So if you apply for a job, either before you apply or after you apply, introduce yourself so that way the owner can put a face to a name and it'll make them more likely to actually pick up your application and, and consider you. I don't think you should ever be look, looking for a barbershop like in a hurry. I think you should take the time, find the right place that you can be for years, right? And nobody likes jumping, jumping around to different barbershops. Like, and it's a red flag for us as the owners if we see that you've worked at like this barbershop for a few months and then you worked over here, it's like, we call them shop hoppers. Like if you worked at like 10 different barbershops, I'm probably not even gonna consider even interviewing you, let alone hiring you.
But if you've applied somewhere, I would follow up after you apply. Just like, you know, in sales, they they teach you to follow up with, with prospects. Like you're trying to get us to hire you. Sometimes the owners get really, really busy and your application might not get looked at right away. So follow up, you know, ask them like, hey, have you guys gotten a chance to check out my application? Go introduce yourself. You can do this in person too. You can follow up in person, which takes it to another level. But follow up, you know, sometimes the application gets buried in emails or if it's a paper, sometimes the papers get misplaced. So it could just be that maybe they did see you, maybe they did see it, but they forgot about it. Or definitely a good idea to follow up. Uh, I wouldn't follow up more than a couple times though, because we always let people know whether we're going to move forward with the application or not. We, we don't just like leave people hanging. So even if we aren't going to proceed with the next step, which is the interview, we're going to let you know that. But not everybody's like that. So maybe they decided not to hire you, but they didn't send you some sort of email or like call you or message you, letting you know that they're not going to move forward. So you can find that out if you follow up instead of just like waiting and hoping that they give you a call. I think this kind of goes along with the type of barbershop you're working at, but pay it, there might be like on our website, there's instructions like on what to look out for the next steps. So after you apply, they might've already tried to reach out to you. So, but some people prefer different communication methods, right? So they might have tried to reach out to you via social media. They might have called you or text you. Um, they could have sent you an email. Typically, that's what we do. We're going to first, we're going to email. Uh, and then we, if we don't hear back through the email, we're, then we'll go to the phone or through social media. But, you know, it, make sure you have the right phone number and email when you apply. <laughs> I've seen so many applications where people apply and they put the wrong phone number and the wrong email and it's like I want to talk to you but I don't I can't I don't have a way of getting in contact with you <laughs> and that's also why follow up is important maybe in case you put the wrong information in on your application you can follow up and be like hey I haven't heard anything and like oh yeah we tried to get in contact with you but when we called the phone number was disconnected or whatever so another reason why it's important to follow up and then the last thing this is another reason why I think it's important not to be trying to be in a hurry when you're looking for a shop because you have to be patient. Like you have to realize that you're on their time and you can speed up the process by doing these things here, by following up, introducing yourself and doing these things to set you apart. But ultimately some barbershops, I know like, like our barbershop, we're always accepting applications, but that doesn't always mean we're hiring. It depends on the type of barbershop. So if it's a booth rent barbershop where they just need to fill chairs, the chances that they're gonna to talk to you, especially if you do these things, are a lot higher than a commission or an hourly shop. Like an hourly or commission-based shop, usually the owners are considering, like, do we even need the help? For I might be applying at a time where they just don't need the help, right? So like one thing that we do is we're always accepting applications but we don't hire everybody that applies, especially if we're not, if we're not at a point where we need more help yet. What we do is we wait until it's like really busy before we bring somebody on, because if we bring somebody on and it's, we're having a slow few months, then it's like, it's just going to bring everybody else's numbers down. And plus we want bringing you on as a new barber. We want you to start off and be busy. So it hurts everybody. If, if you, as an owner, if you bring somebody on and the barbershop is slow. So you have to be patient and kind of realize even if there's, even if they say they're hiring the barbershop, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are, or maybe they are, but you weren't a good fit. So then you need to go back here and be like, how do I make myself stand out more and maybe try again later on. But don't, I would don't keep applying at a barbershop. Like we haven't, we track all of our applications and we can see like this person has applied with us like 10 times. So we can definitely, and so those people get like a red flag and they probably never have a shot because they weren't patient and they just kept applying over and over and over again, but they never did any of this other stuff. But you have to understand that there might be your dream barbershop that you want to work at, but the time that you're looking for a job and the time that they need a barber just don't line up. So if that doesn't work out, then just try again, right? You can still go and introduce yourself. You can still do these other things. You can keep in contact and keep a good relationship with the owner. 
but just realize that if you have to be patient because just because you need a job right now doesn't mean that they need a barber. I made this video for you barbers that are getting ready to start looking for a new job. Either you're fresh out of school or you're looking for a new, a new place to call home. Do these things. The more of these things that you do, the higher the likelihood that you get the job.